Welcome to the Spy Collection. I'm Anastasios and in this episode we look at this small book from 1987, The Constitution of the United States of America, a bicentennial commemorative edition. What makes this unique is that it was published by the CIA for its employees during the 200th anniversary of the signing of the Constitution, something that took place in 1787. From 1981, and until 1987, William J. Casey was the DCI. Casey was an experienced spy, having served with OSS during the Second World War, where he became the OSS head for the Secret Intelligence Branch in Europe, and was also awarded the Bronze Star Medal for meritorious achievements. So back to this book. It's the United States Constitution, of course, but it also has a message written by Casey himself as its introduction. Let's read it. A message to all agency officers and employees and members of the intelligence community staff. On September 17, 1787, the delegates at the Philadelphia Convention signed the Constitution before submitting it to the 13 states for ratification. As we approach the bicentennial of that historic date, we should pause and reflect on the freedoms that we enjoy by the guarantees of that document. Simply to read the preamble, we the people, reminds us that in our constitution, it is the people who grant certain powers to a central government and not the other way around. In circulating these commemorative copies of the constitution, I urge you to read further, to understand our rights and privileges as citizens and the responsibilities that go with them. The Constitution is the foundation of our free and democratic society. No other country's Constitution has stood the test of time as long or as well as ours. Although written almost 200 years ago, it continues to guide our modern society and to provide the framework for our democracy. All of us in the agency and throughout the intelligence community must never forget our promise to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and we must be vigilant to see that its protections are not infringed. To honor our Constitution's bicentennial, I urge you to read this commemorative copy and to learn from it the precepts and principles that have made Americans a self-governing people dedicated to the rule of law. May we all work to assure its preservation forever. William J. Casey Such special editions of the Constitution during major celebrations aren't uncommon in the U.S. intelligence community and serve as a reminder to all their employees of their mission. For example, former CIA employee and later NSA subcontractor Edward Snowden wrote about it in his book, Permanent Record, about a similar special edition from 2012. In his book he writes that, Then there was my favorite, the 17th of September, Constitution Day and Citizenship Day, which is the Holy Day's formal name, commemorates the moment in 1787 when the delegates to the Constitutional Convention officially ratified or signed the document. Technically, Constitution Day is not a federal holiday, just a federal observance, meaning that Congress didn't think our country's founding document and the oldest national constitution still in use in the world were important enough to justify giving people a paid day off. The intelligence community had always had an uncomfortable relationship with the Constitution Day, which meant its involvement was typically limited to circulating a blunt email drafted by each agency's press shops and signed by director so-and-so and and setting up a sad little table in a forgotten corner of the cafeteria. On the table could be some free copies of the Constitution, printed, bound and donated to the government by the kind and generous rabble-rousers at places like Cato Institute or the Heritage Foundation, since the IEC was rarely interested in spending some of its own billions promoting civil liberties through stapled paper. I suppose the staff got the message, or didn't. Over the seven Constitution days I spent in the IC, I don't think I'd ever known anyone but myself to actually take a copy of the table. Because I love irony almost as much as I love freebies, I'd always take a few, one for myself and the others to salt across my French workstations. I kept my copy propped against the Rubik's Cube on my desk and for a time made the habit of reading it over lunch, trying not to drip grease on We the People from one of the cafeteria's grim slices of elementary school pizza. I liked reading the Constitution, 
partially because its ideas are great, partially because its prose is good, but really because it freaked out my co-workers. In an office where everything you printed had to be thrown into a shredder after you were done with it, someone would always be intrigued by the presence of hard copy pages lying on a desk. They'd amble over and ask, what have you got there? The Constitution. Then they'd make a face and back away slowly. On the Constitution Day 2012, I picked up the document in earnest. I hadn't really read the whole thing in quite a few years, though I was glad to know that I still knew the preamble by heart. Now, however, I read through it in its entirety, from the articles to the amendments. I was surprised to be reminded that fully 50% of the Bill of Rights, the document's first 10 amendments, were intended to make the job of law enforcement harder. The 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th amendments were all deliberately, carefully designed to create inefficiencies and hamper the government's ability to exercise its power and conduct surveillance. We'll stop here, but that played a role into Snowden's decision to go public about the mass surveillance programs of the United States and the rest of the Five Eyes in June of 2013. Back to our artifact. As per Snowden's book, it's quite likely that such special editions of the constitutions are still printed in the US intelligence community. Not sure if they are all donations, as Snowden stated, or something like this. Printed by the CIA for the CIA in 1987. Regardless, we hope that this gave you another look into the United States spy world, which demonstrates the day-to-day life in this field of work that is not so widely known. If you never studied the United States Constitution, we highly recommend you to do so, regardless of where you are from or where you are currently living. It's a historically important document, and with the US being the world's superpower, it's important to understand its foundations and principles. Of course, in real life, things aren't always that simple, so remember that. Nothing's as it seems.